Hi there, welcome to the Non-Serbian Podcast. Back after holidays and various plagues. And today I'm talking with one of our own people, uh, Zach Pierce, who does a lot of work. Some might say a lot more than I do on editing many of the podcasts you've hopefully been listening to over the past year or however long this has been happening. Whew. Trying to get back into it here with Zach. Um, Zach, how'd you get into non-Serbian? And how's it going, actually, first and foremost? It's going pretty good. This year hasn't been too bad so far, so I'm good with that. I mean, there's plenty of time for it to go terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did uh, non-Serbian find you? Because I wasn't there when it happened. Yeah, so I think I was just like a listener, and then... I can't remember what prompted it, but I just basically like reached out to Joel and was like, Hey man, like, do you need any help with just the labor involved in like putting this crap out? Cause I'm like kind of familiar with like audio stuff and that's how it started. I was, I was then, and I guess I was then in, investigated and interrogated. I passed all of the, um, challenges, <laughs> the test of strength and I was accepted into the, the cult. And why were you listening to non serve in the first place? What happened to make you fall into this unfortunate political philosophy that we suffer from? <laughs> yeah, so I think I was just looking for general, like, political philosophy podcasts. And um, I had already been interested in, like, stuff... I, I, I'm going to say it's like everybody else. The Center for Stateless Society was kind of influential for me. and um, So much the better. Yeah. Yeah, just the non-Servian podcast seemed to be like interviewing a lot of the same sort of, like, there's a lot of crossover there. So I think I've listened to every single one. I can't even say the same. So you're our number one fan, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess that's what happened. A lot of us over here at the moment, at least, came out of the quote-unquote right libertarian sphere, the DC libertarian, whatever you want to call it, and you were never in those circles, were you? No, not. I, I'm Okay, so politically, although I have, I guess, sort of had a libertarian phase, I'm more like all over the place. Do you have any kind of arc you can chart? Do you have a journey that brought you here? Yeah, so I started off being, like, referring to myself as apolitical, mm. as, like, a, you know, kid, basically. And then I was convinced for a period of time that, you know, uh, voting mattered, and okay. that, I don't know, I was basically like a lukewarm, centrist, third-way kind of, like, person's you know, like, oh, it's all going to get better in the future. Kind of, like, optimistic. I started getting to the point where I was, like, sick of, like, electoral politics. And then I started looking into, like, actually, you know, the undergirdings of, like, what I believed in. And so that kind of, like, landed me roughly in anarchism. But I mean, what did that look like, though? Did you stop in, I don't know, Marxism or anything wacky along the way? So many people I talk to have the longest trips. Yeah, so, like, I, again, like, I used to think that I was a middle-of-the-road type person, right? Like, very, like, moderate. Because I would be like, yeah, so, like, guns, like... Why is everybody trying to make them illegal? Or, like, why is everybody, like, totally bonkers about, like, how much they love guns? Technically, both of those are good questions still, but I do see what you mean. I have, like, a, so I, like, I have like a sort of nuanced position on this and just conversation with friends or whatever. So I always felt like I was both right and left which mm. made me center or something. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, in yeah. reality, what it was is I was just really, I had a lot of strong, um, basically like the, I used to say I hated hierarchical thinking before I knew what anarchism really was. <laughs> so, good start like that. <laughs> so I think it's just a good fit for me. Mm. 
what do you call yourself now if somebody asked if somebody said hey Zach what do you, what what do you what are your politics what party do you belong to or however yeah, they phrase I, it I mean in our society yeah, for sure with yeah, no I adjectives nah um nah <laughs> I'm not gonna do any adjectives. Fair enough. Yeah, no. I've always liked the, I've always liked that crowd. All right. I know there's plenty of pessimistic anarchists, but I always associate it, especially these days, as a slightly positive philosophy. And you, well, sometimes. You feel like I'm pessimistic. Yeah, I do. I get mm. doomer doomer vibes. I'm all for prepping. I mean, I should do that more. Right. Than okay. I, so it's like realism <laughs> it's not pessimism like i'm not like oh this, is, this sucks i'm like no that's not the way it is the way it is is like this and people are like oh that's really dark and terrible and i'm like oh sorry <laughs> that's both vague and depressing so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well, again, like, I mean, I, this is where, like, I've always been, like, a little bit off, you know, because people have a tendency to fit neatly into things, and I'm an oddball. I mean, I would argue that the uh, political philosophy, the mainstream type, is exceedingly pessimistic um, to a fault. Probably more than you are in some ways. Oh, yeah. When you get people, like, when they feel free to speak and they start saying the shit that they fucking think, it's, like, really awful. It's like, yeah, we should nuke everybody. It's like, okay, no. Well, that's true, no. Let's not do that. Um, well, what does being an anarchist look like in your life? Who are you in real life? At least, how much can you reveal to our fine audience? <sighs> Alright, I'm an electrician. Okay. I'm a dad. Mm -hmm. I have three kids, right? I was in the army for like mm -hmm. a decade. I graduated from college. I've read a lot of uh, stuff on political philosophy and economics. And I don't know. I think that's that's it. I'm into like some like woo-woo stuff too. So like if you're too rational, we might have words. <laughs> I thought you were being desperately rational with that pessimism stuff. The realism of it all. It's just how it is. But I am. I'm, like, super soft on, like, people that have, like, super, like, weird beliefs. Why? I used to be much softer on them, and I get less and less so, unfortunately. I don't know if that's my, like, liberal heart or something doing that. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, it's like, if you believe in, like, like supernatural crap, right? I just, like, respect that. Like, that's fine. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I defend people that, like, have these, like, stupid beliefs. I mean, Supernatural, I love 14 Times Magazine, God knows. But 14 Times Magazine often feels like it has more uh, cre credulity than um, a lot of other mainstream craziness uh, in, our, in our modern times. What is I just, this? <laughs> look it up. You listeners look it up. You look it up. 14 times magazine. It's just like wacky shit magazine. It's a British publication. Um, Charles Fort was a guy who I always associate him with toads raining from the sky, but like it has an intersection of actual shit in that someone said they saw something weird, some kind of folklore, pop culture, current weirdness. It has like a good amalgamation. Yeah. Or we'll have an article that's just like a story about, that doesn't demand that you believe, you know, in aliens of a certain type, but it'll be like, here's the history of those aliens and what this guy said about it. And I, I always like that. Cause like, you can't dispute but is that it somebody said they not, saw something. <laughs> is this purporting to be nonfiction? Yeah, but it's not as annoying to me as a lot of things are. <laughs> Got it. Okay. And yeah, it tends I to mean, focus on stuff that I don't think harms uh, people that much to like think about aliens and stuff. I mean, I've met people that like believe in like government created nano robots. I'm and, glad like, I don't because that sounds very scary. I mean, that like they're already here and controlling things, right? Like, yeah, and it's like, all right, like I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna just like 
yell at this person. <laughs> no, I mean, you no. Know? It's not interesting either to just yell at people. One of my favorite books of all time was Them by John Ronson, where he goes and hangs out with people who believe lots of wacky things, including some of the weavers from the Ruby Ridge standoff. And, you know, snarky, like, gawker journalism where you just, like, snark at people isn't very interesting. Um, but if you don't believe in masters, do you believe in gods? No, nah, I mean, I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. Were you always one? I was raised Catholic, and I think I've been an atheist since about sixth grade. I was, like, asking the priest about evolution and, like, the Big Bang Theory and stuff. Doesn't the Catholic Church kind of try to squeeze evolution in there, or am I wrong? I mean, look, like, the Catholic Church isn't, like, as much as it is a monolith, it isn't, you know? Like, yeah. it's definitely, like, yeah. different pockets you know but yeah i mean if you look at like it's like is it allegorical i don't know like i think I, there's a lot of good stuff in religious writings and in scriptures right mm -hmm. it's like valuable but i feel like what people do with like religion is god awful <laughs> yeah that checks out for me too i would agree with you that. know it's like, so yeah, and, and the truth is, is at the core of it, no, I don't believe in uh, any gods. That's Sorry. <laughs> Sorry no. to all the um, indigenous and Catholic anarchists out there, but you're or, wrong. Or other, yeah. Um, I swear to God, though, every time I hear about some badass old peace activist, it's always some old Catholic guy or, or gal. Right, so. yeah. But then I'm like, but how can you be involved in the Catholic Church? They're so bad. Yeah. But then evangelicalism, you're like, wow, that's even worse somehow, maybe. And then you cry. Yeah, I mean, it depends, though. Like, there's, there's like, just sort of generic do-gooders out there, right? You know? And they're doing... They're feeding the poor. Mm hmm You know? There's, like, that kind of stuff going on. So, you know, I mean, it depends on what aspect of it you're talking about. I'm not going to like sit here and be like, the only good church is one that's on fire. or whatever. <laughs> you know. That someone's going to take that, put it on a shirt, screen print that shit. So yeah, some. I think it's already there. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like, I think people get really hung up on that kind of stuff. Like we had this whole discussion, I think at one point about like how hard should like, anarchists be on religion and i think that like we like and, like the discussion kind of veered towards the thing of like that the like new atheist movement is like such a shit storm of garbage the one that started to turn into the alt right at least a yeah. Lot of it. yeah 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 it's just it, it's like and also it like kind of doesn't jive like tolerance you know what i mean like if you if you want to be like a serious person that wants to have like you know a utopia of utopias or whatever like you can't be like yeah but if you don't believe the same shit as me you're not in <laughs> like it doesn't make I sense mean, that's true but eventually you get down to like i've been reading more and more about fundamentalist christianity lately like duggar family style of like quiverful just like have yeah. let the Lord control your womb type of shit. Um, and yeah. the thing about that kind of thing is I'm still going to always say the fucking state's the worst, worst version of this thing. It's the, it's, it's the biggest, strongest bully, but I'm really starting to appreciate lately how authoritarian families can be. Uh, frequently ones when they have like the power of the good Lord behind them to, you know, to basically set up people's entire lives yeah. for failure and a lack of knowledge. And what I'm starting to find out more and more, cause I wasn't really raised at all religious that people become spiritually terrorized. Like you have little six year olds thinking they will burn in hell. And that's, you know, that's not anarchist. Like, that's not uh, no, it's <laughs> tolerant. Not. I mean, I'm not raising my kids in the Catholic Church or anything no, I know. like that. That's not happening. But what do you do with that in, you know, as an anarchist? I don't know. Um, 
Well, that's why I'm, like, baffled by, like, people that are, like, well, I'm, like, Christian anarchist or Muslim I don't, I don't, anarchist. I'm, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it, man. Like, that's a big part of this junk. And, like, you know, like, yeah, like, the state, like, and religion have been historically linked, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And then that goes, you know, right. Okay, so, like, the cappuccino thing, right? Like, like, why do we have cappuccino? Because of freaking colonialism, right? Like, and where did that come from? It's like, you know, you follow this stuff back and it's all interrelated. Okay, you just dropped the cappuccino thing and our listeners will have no idea what you're talking about. Nah, Um, they will. (laughs) Our super fans, maybe. Um, The cappuccino question, which admittedly I think I forgot in one or two interviews, but that's been a standby of non-servium since long before the dawn of Zach or I, where it's how do you get a cappuccino in your political utopia? Um, you know, and then the answer involves, can you, you know, w- would it be a free market? Would it be a coffee commune? Like, what is it? You know, and we've gotten different answers. And Zach seems to be against cappuccinos today. Right. Yeah. I mean, my, like, I'm just I saying... Mean, like, listen, like, I like coffee, okay? I'm not, like, an inhuman monster that, <laughs> that like, won't drink a cup of coffee. But, like, truth be told, I, I take caffeine pills instead of coffee now. That's bleak. <laughs> that it's seems awesome. Less fun. It's so much more convenient. But then you're not getting anything out of it except the drug. I mean, it's, it's more honest, perfectly. perhaps. It's more honest. As it's to dosed less. perfectly. It's, like a modern marvel it's like pharmaceutical grade caffeine like what's that's so much better than like something that like if you're like concerned about like the ethics of coffee switch to like caffeine pills or like tea or something i don't know (laughs) yeah i'm just gonna keep overpaying as much as i can possibly for uh Coffee that looks really convincingly and has words like shade, grown, and fair trade, and I don't know what that even means, but just, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, how much, you know, how much can you trust a label that says something is fair trade? I mean, anything with labels. I get so paralyzed in uh, stores sometimes. Like, you know, picking up the eggs, like, cage-free, do I actually believe that? What does that even mean? You know, right. I, already, I already paid eight dollars or seven dollars for eggs before this avian right. pollution. And I have chickens. There you go. That's the. And I don't thing. buy eggs. That's the sense. Everybody thing. should have chickens. Yeah, I don't know if I can have them where I live, but um. Yeah, what are they going to do? Like, I don't. I I want to. I don't. I, I hear. I hear people say this right online. They're like, "Oh, we can't have chickens." Right? Like, is the like you know if you want to make it. <laughs> like a government guy, like or a cop, feel really bad. Be like, make them get to the point where they're like telling you you can't have chickens in your yard, and be like, yeah, you're taking food out of my mouth and my kids' mouths. We eat these eggs, and you're telling me I can't have them. You're telling me that, like, in America, quote unquote, there's plenty of people that wouldn't work on, as you know, and plenty of petty local bureaucrats. Not necessarily a cop, but certainly maybe a cop would be. Well, it says right here under section C three. And the Hoppaites would agree because it's local tyranny, baby. That's what they love. I know, but like, there's all kinds of rules about that junk in like various municipalities around me, and yeah. like, you still hear like the roosters crowing. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I used to hear one in Oakland, PA, which is much was more. It's closer to the city of Pittsburgh, and I still would hear a rooster. My other thing is I don't want to get animals that I... I got to make sure I can, can take care of them. I don't want animals that somebody's going to take chickens and kill. take care of themselves, man. If you don't feed your chickens and you just free-range them, they will feed themselves. They'll find yeah. food. Yeah. They're awesome. But I want to like I want to be nice to animals if they're under my possession because they're alive. And so that takes a little more responsibility as far as I'm concerned. Can an animal be a possession? Um, 
I have definitely needed one, but many talks on. We need to get some talks going on non server about this. About this. technically, obviously, legally, yes. I think technically, yes, but it's self evidently not the same as you know this my phone. Like like this is not alive. It's an object, and a chicken is alive, and you can tell by looking at it. And to me, that implies other responsibilities. An animal is kind of like a child that you never lose stewardship over, you know, unless you send it back to the wilds. But that chicken ain't gonna last that long, probably. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely big on like everybody should have chickens, man. Are you planning to ever eat those chickens, or are they fully egg? No, nah, no, no, they're pets and they lay eggs. Yeah. And we we'll eat the eggs and. I'm not vegan. Nor am I. Perhaps one day. One day I'll get there. Or society will have collapsed and I'll be eating, I don't know, dogs or something. We'll see. Yeah, listen, okay, this and this goes back to the thing, I think I mentioned it the other night, but like I'm not a doomsday prepper. Okay. I am a doomsday truther. And I think everybody else should be like this. Like, tell me how this is going to go down. Like, that just means you're a more confident prepper. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know if I feel this terminology is as illuminating as you think it is. Cause no, I'll, uh, but that's what I'm saying. Like every you're time saying somebody I'm a prepper, but I'm right. So, every time yeah. somebody brings me their like their thing about like societal collapse, it's like completely unrealistic. It's like, dude, that's not going to happen. <laughs> what is going to happen? Like people's, they're like, oh, when the shit hits the fan, you know, because like, you know, an EMP, like it's like, okay, like, yeah, like EMPs are a big right wing fear. The geopolitics of like launching an EMP strike against like Middle America or whatever. Come on. So what is going to happen? I mean, what are you prepping for? I'm not. I mean, it's not even really prepping. That see, that's to me. I, I, that's why I said I'm like I'm not a prepper. <laughs> I'm not not prepping for anything. I just think that like self reliance is a very liberating thing to do. Okay, well that that's speaking my language a little bit more. Um, right, like it's like the same thing as like like my wife is doing a lot of stuff right now with like shh, and it's I guess it's really popular because the um the economy is supposedly bad. They tell me right, so everybody's like pinching pennies or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like stuff in cash envelopes and all this. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that people are into. And my wife has been really helping to take, uh, get our finances, household finances under control. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, like it's liberating, right? It's like, that's a form of self-reliance and that's the kind of liberation that, people have access to today people get a, like stuck on these like lofty like <sighs> utopian things and it's like yeah like right so there's that but like the middle of the bell curve right like everybody in the middle what, what are they doing like how can they like get like how can you integrate the concepts of like radical politics into your life and not like end up like as like a crust punk. <laughs> Sorry, crust punks. It's mandatory. We all end up as crust punks in the end, but your dogs on lengths of clothesline. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like the idea. I've, I've, I've liked the idea of self-reliance. I always had have when I was little, I was obsessed with like wilderness survival stories and stuff. But, like, going back to your cappuccino ranting and stuff, and when I've talked to you in the past, it, it always seems like, like the, the undercurrent is the complete and utter death of globalization. And I am somebody who wants a good, a gooder globalization. Like, I want it a little better than what we got and well, what other poorer people got and stuff. But the idea that it's completely absent is a very sad idea to me because... That goes back to national... That, that enhances national borders, as far as I'm concerned. 
if you know if we're not if nobody's trading with anybody and we're all doing our own thing within our country's borders it's not you know it's not the yeah, citizen of the world like, thing that i like to think yeah i mean people get like really so that's like this is a good example of like where i like am maybe i'm a fence sitter i don't know but like you have like people that are like kind of like on the like left left <laughs> right and they're like mm-hmm. market's bad mm-hmm. right it's like i really like appreciate that sentiment like i hate money it's annoying because i don't i'm not the type of person that wants to take more than my fair share i just want to get some food <laughs> like eat that junk and then like you know maybe use a like a reasonable amount of electricity like i'm trying to be reasonable right about like my personal consumption i'm trying to be reasonable about how i live my life i'm not like the uh what you call it i'm not the utility monster right yeah where like my want to do bad things is so great it overpowers like everybody else's wants to have like good things right and I feel like most people are like that. I guess I'm a humanist. Oh, there's the optimism again, that rogue optimism. Right. Yes. I am ultimately optimistic. I'm just realistic, too. <laughs> again, this is some serious subjectivity. And the subjectivity of, of how much is enough, you know? Can we live in a world with the, some of the glorious surplus that we've been enjoying for the past? No. No? Yes! Okay, you, then then fucking turn off the po- turn off the podcast because we can't have computers because they're made of batteries well, that somebody fucking no, 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 in China. No, 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 no. But when you talk about like surplus, right? Like remember like surplus. towards the beginning of COVID, okay, there was this whole thing of them like talking like there was a a decline in the demand for milk, right? Because most of the dairy products are actually going into like restaurants and like convenience stores and all these places. When the whole like thing shuts down, right? The the, the economy shuts down, so to speak, right? Now all of a sudden they've got all these cows that are good. They're still producing. That's a biological system. They're producing Mm -hmm. milk, right? And now the milk, they can't sell it at the price that they want. The price is going to go down. Because the demand is going down, right. believe in supply and demand, right? And so, what do they do? They they dump it's that, shit yeah, and poured it down the drain so much so that it caused damage to like the, <laughs> the local ecosystem and water tables or whatever because it's got like all this like lactic acid and all this nonsense in it. Yeah. So, like, look, that to me is not like oh surplus is good. That surplus is bad. That's true. That is that that, that okay. Is and it just shows that, like you know, nobody died from not having milk during that period. But I mean, we're just gonna go. I mean, yes, that surplus of milk was a huge waste. You know, there's a lot of tormented that. for no reason. The idea, like, it's not just surplus is fine, but we have like massive overproduction. Yeah, oh, that, that that that's a very valid and good. But to me, surplus is the po- like the li- positive libertarian origins of like why I'm relatively comfortable and I'm not dying in a ditch from yeah. But that's know, my see, and that's the whole thing. That's that's that that right wing shit. That's what that is, though. It's not. I'm not saying that you're like a right winger, Lucy. What I'm saying though is is that that's that's like a like a right wing thing, like to say like oh like you know capitalism. You know, Why do you have anything then? I, I don't mean, have fucking dengue fever because capitalism. Like, no, that's not actually true, you dipshit. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, why do you have anything? Like, my huge problem with left wing people is the belief that not not why is anybody poor, but why is anybody not poor? Like, what caused that? Then you explore that avenue, and sometimes that involves markets and trading and things that civilizations get built up upon. The problem is, you know, when we are so automated that we make, we get way too much milk and have to fucking pour it down the storm drain, or the general huge amounts of waste, like food waste in America and and other problems. Like, there's a bunch of problems. Yeah. They didn't have to do that. No, they they didn't. They chose to do that. Yeah. It's It's always a choice. Well, I don't know how, I, I don't think I know, I know, I don't quite know about the biology of cows enough. To fully have this conversation, but I mean the general, yes, the general idea. I, that's true. 
I mean, it could have been donated. I was just going to say that. There's so many fucking rules about not being able to donate, you know, deer meat or other stuff to, like, a homeless shelter. There's that. A lot of shit like that cripples charity and help and self-reliance and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, we got- and so that's the thing is, is once you start to see, and that's where you kind of cross over, right? Like, if you if you follow, like, a lot of, like, the, the right wing... I'll say right wing of like economics or neoclassical economics or whatever. It seems like they're very like apologetic towards like capitalist systems that, that overproduce. And once you actually start looking at that stuff, I just don't think that there's any way to remain in defense of it. If I put on my libertarian hat, I would say the, you know, or put on my Ludwig von Mises hat, not, the Mises Institute, please. No one, right. No one yeah, bring, like no one bring the torches. The actual one who thought price signals were really important. And we know the price of dairy is warped because it has a lot of delicious subsidies and things like that. So maybe that that wouldn't that surely would not eliminate pollution and excess and waste, but it would perhaps diminish some of it. Uh, you know get rid of milk subsidies and get rid of the inability to donate milk to your local homeless. And like, you're going in the right direction at least. Yeah. I mean, in my ideal world, right. Like people would have realized that like, we don't run as good on animal proteins and animal products as we do on plant products. And people would be like, not so interested in consuming cow milk. What kind of plant products are we talking? Drinking your oat milk in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, it, but again, like the only reason that we have to have oat milk is because of the tradition of consuming dairy products. Right. I don't know what else to put in my coffee that I'm also not going to have. So <laughs> I really don't know how to live in this in the, well, while talking to you. Yeah, my, my my alternative universe is probably not palatable to a lot of people, but you know, it would be more ethical. <laughs> I'm still not quite sure what your alternate alternate universe is, though. I mean, I, I'm getting pieces of it, much like your universe. It's 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 fragmented, segmented, and cut off from other things. Is what I'm getting. I just think that, like, I mean, it, and again, this is where I kind of have to like fall back on like like optimism and like the ethics stuff. Like, if so, a, a book that's been really influential for me was like. The Expanding Circle by Peter Singer, right? Okay. And a bit you know, of there, I like Peter Singer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, in that, you know, he basically kind of makes the case that, like, over time, it seems like human ethics has improved and grown, like the Expanding Circle. Agreed. I mean, like, we started Agreed. off back at, like, you know, eye for an eye and, like, here we are talking about like complex justifications for like various ethical quandaries or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know? So the idea though would be like in the future that like more and more people are going to like digest the thought of like, Oh, like we can like do this in a like better way. Right. Like in a way that's like not as harmful. Well, there's always the question of what's actually not to go full like neoliberal long term all that other buzz buzzwordy shit that I don't really know enough about to even talk about anyway. But there's plenty of, you know, feel good things that aren't necessarily helping anything. Or even people like my uh anarchist cousin, I last I checked at least had given up on not eating meat because that, you know, big old system his not eating meat doesn't actually fix anything there. Um so you can yeah, easily t- right. talk yourself out of doing anything, or you can also just pat yourself on the back all day because you know you're you're doing a thing that seems on paper to be really good and moral, you know. So you got to figure out some shit. See, and this is where I so like this is a good point. Like I, I I think that the argument, the health argument for like vegetarianism, is actually stronger nowadays then it's the, completely uninteresting to me as an argument totally uninteresting. i know but if you man it's not an ethical argument i mean it's a 
No, but it's not. It's like a self, says it's to get like, that's but in a way it is though, right? Because like people are <laughs> people are self-interested. Okay, you do you want to die? No? Okay, stop eating the bacon. I did, but it is delicious. I mean, <laughs> I wish it wasn't. I wish I'd forgotten that it was but delicious. It, it goes like way further than that. It's like don't eat the eggs. Don't eat anything that comes. But from you're the eating the eggs. You're eating those eggs. You, you gotta, you gotta have kale. You gotta have your cruciferous vegetables. Kale's okay, I guess. <laughs> but no, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like nobody, everybody wants it to be like fun and cool to be like radical, right? But it's like not. No, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm not even that radical. And it's still not that fun. You're like, oh, this, like, you're reading some shit and you're like, oh, I guess I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the slogan of our times in certain ways, not just in a whiny right wing way, but in like, yeah, I mean, there are people who never think about stuff. And again, I'm not patting myself on the back because I don't do nearly enough shit to help anyone in this world, but. There are people who go to the grocery store, and all I'm thinking about is what they want to eat or what they can afford. And I'm trying to think of, you know, is there any meat in that? Is that, oh my God, the chocolate industry is a nightmare. I forgot that that, and you know, it's tied with that slavery. And then, you know, it's a, it's a long day at the grocery store. So. Oh, yeah. Or like right. my brother. And then, and then again, at the end of the day, man, you, you have to live, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to tell people that they should feel bad about being born into this system at all. Like, and that's why I'm like soft on like all the weird, like, it's like, Oh yeah, you believe in the sky wizard. Cool. Like, you know, you didn't really, they didn't choose that. No, that's true. They didn't like do a survey of all the possible beliefs and ethical systems and decide, yeah, I'm going to stick with like this, like, you know, <laughs> Wahhabism or whatever, you know? Oh God, don't, <laughs> no, not that please. Um, yeah. If you did that as an adult uh, and nobody told you anything until that day, and then you did a survey of religions and picked one, that would be more ethical to be sure. You know, there's a whole atheist thing about there being no, you know, religious children because like they, they're just, they don't have, I don't know. Right. Yes. But again, like, I'm, I'm like soft on like, I mean, I guess I, I just think that like spirituality is okay. If you want to be spiritual. Well, at the end of the day, the, re the bigger reason why I would never be say a Christian is not that couldn't happen based on science, which is probably, I mean, that's true. Sure. But it's more that, if some dude was in charge who would put you in hell for not sufficiently praising him, that's a bigger problem. And yeah. not only do I not believe that anything would be set up that miserably, but if it was, you know, then the correct response is, fuck you, God, I'm out. Yeah. Because this whole system is bullshit. And then you go to hell and party, I guess. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, what can you do to make, like, um... What can anarchists do to make being woke more cool? That's not at all the takeaway that I thought we were heading towards. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> I just don't know. What are you going to do? Since you're the guest. I don't know. I'm trying to get everybody to, like, for real, like, go get some chickens. Always with the chickens. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a game changer. At least it was for me. Did you get, are you sick of eggs yet, though? I mean, no. Like, here's another thing. Like, if you don't feel like eating the eggs, give the eggs to people that eat eggs. That Every egg you give like to that. somebody that they don't buy from the factory farm I is like one little iota of damage to the fucking system. Of that's, a, that's actually... You're selling it all of a sudden, because I'm not super into eggs uh, a lot of the time, but having a weird bird in my yard and then getting to give people food, that both of those sound nice. So maybe I'll consider that in life. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> I just think that people are very, like, 
they have the blinders on, right? And I think that that's actually right now, like that's, I mean, that's why I think non-servium and like C4SS and like a lot of these like, you know, media outlets are so important and relevant is because, yeah, like the first place that we have to like convince people that they can like, a li- like liberation is possible is, is in your head, right? Mm-hmm. Like it has to be. And like people are like <laughs> just living life with blinders on, you know? So it's like doing things that help people to take those blinders off is a worthwhile cause. But I mean, where did those blinders come from? They came from, well, their parents, probably their family, probably uh, their religion, often certainly their schooling. Um, I mean, yeah, it's everything. All these foundational things is how people, you know, have those blinders, yeah, people, whatever that means. There's a there's you. a term in psychology. It's it's called the fundamental attribution error, mm. right? And it's like one of these things where like people have a tendency to like attribute something that somebody has done or the way that they are to like them as a person, as opposed to like their circumstances or background. Right. It's like, Oh, this person is dumb. Mm. Well, is that person dumb or do they look dumb to you because you're not familiar with, you know, like, and the truth is, is that that's like a common it's common enough to where it's been studied in like social psychology. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that like, that's a, but why is it there in the first place? I don't know. You could make the argument that it's evolutionary. That is very, I, I, I never make that argument cause it bores me to tears and biological determinism is gross and I hate it. And I hate Jordan Peterson and people who <laughs> use, who use that. But uh, who do you like? Who is, I mean, you, 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 you dropped a couple names, but not a lot. I mean, is there anybody who gave you an epiphany or any books that you always cite? I think anything by Peter Singer is probably <laughs> worthwhile, right? Like, yeah, I've interested read in ethics. very short stuff from him, I think. Um, animal stuff, I think, obviously. Like... Yeah, I mean, there's a funny story about how I got into Peter Singer. Maybe I should include that. <laughs> I don't know. So you can try. I was in college, and yeah, this is a perfect, this is a great, this is how it is, man. <laughs> so, all right. I was in college, and I had a, um, it was like a writing class. It was just like your basic, like, uh, like composition or whatever, English composition 101 type class. And the way that the teacher wanted to do this was, okay, we're going to write, you pick a controversial topic Mm -hmm. and then you're going to write like a series of essays, like for, against, da, 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 so on. And I was talking with one of my friends, like the evening where I had found out about this and he's like, dude, you should do killing babies. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who wants to kill a baby? Like, and he's like, no, no, no. Like, (laughs) <laughs> There's like this guy, like Peter Singer, and okay, yeah. yeah, and he like has defended like infanticide, and it's like super controversial. And like I was like, okay, like this has piqued my interest. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> like went and like started reading like practical ethics and stuff, and like looking into like the history of this. Did my essays? First essay was like why killing babies is bad. A plus. Second essay, <laughs> why killing babies is good. F. <laughs> the teacher was like a Christian, oh, fundamental no. Christian, and she yeah. was like, "I cannot give somebody a good grade <laughs> on a paper that defends the killing of babies for any reason." Now this she is on. We're talking about bioethics, okay? These she are like, opened the box and she couldn't deal with what came out. I mean, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, don't kill babies. That sounds like kind of an easy, yeah, cool, easy one for you. Class after I ended up having to like retake the class with a different teacher, and yeah, it was it was a mess. But um, along the way, you know, I was introduced to Peter Singer, so that was awesome. Well, I tried to get you on the um, the the child child raising thing but i think you danced away from that topic 
I don't know that there really is such a thing as anarchist parenting, right? Um, I think it's just like good parenting. Like if you look at like psychology, like developmental psychology, you look at like actual research, you look at like, I, I mean, I'll say this, like if, <laughs> if you're like a very hardcore traditional religion type person, then you're not even going to entertain the idea of like psychology giving you advice on parenting. Right. Unless you're using it to back up what you already believe or want based on your religion and trash. Sure, 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 sure. Like, yeah. And some like crazy argument situation, but <clears throat> so we actually talk about this a lot. Um, it's like, Youth liberation, right, is like a legitimate thing, mm -hmm. right? And then you have like on the other side of things, like you don't want to be too permissive of a parent, right? Because the outcomes for parents that are overly permissive, right, are like not as good, generally speaking, as for people that are more authoritative in their tone of parenting, which is like the way it's usually divided up is you, you have like authoritarian, right? You have uh, permissive and then like authoritative. Someone I noticed that you that. didn't say authoritarian. Yeah. So I yes. think I'm picking up what you're putting Yeah. Down. So that's like a normal thing that people talk about in parenting and kids need limits, right? Like they're, and they literally they're like, aren't they're in training. Yeah. Ex yes, of course. You know, so like I have to like, help them with that okay like i'm but like there's a there really is it's it's hard like there's a difference between genuinely being irritated with your kids right and then like having a like a pre-established plan and then like enforcing that right like <laughs> it's like one thing to be like all right we're not going to jump on the couch. Okay. Yes, we, all we are. agreed in the family meeting last week, <laughs> there's not going to be jumping on the couch. And it's like another thing to be like, get the fuck off the couch. Sure. sure. <laughs> you know, like, like I've had it. <laughs> okay. And you I all share like, the couch. If you like, jump on it, you might ruin it. You know, both of, those, shared. both of those ways are valid. Right. Because, Okay, check this out. Like, I'm a person, they're a person. We live True. together in the same structure. True. If it was you, Lucy, jumping on my couch, and I was like, hey, can you stop jumping on the couch? <laughs> hey, can you stop? And you're still like, fuck you, Zach, I'm going to jump on the couch. Don't jump on the like, hey, get the fuck off the couch, Lucy. Okay? <laughs> you know, and that has nothing to do with the fact that they're my kids. That's because they're being fucking annoying. Okay? Yeah. So there, it's like people, that's why like, I don't like pass a whole lot of judgment on other parents, you know, when you see them doing like questionable stuff because generally speaking, parents really do have their kids' best interests at heart. And I don't, they think uh, they do. That's, they definitely think they do. Yeah. I mean, it, it, when you get around a lot of other parents, like at like a school function, you realize like the vast majority of people are pretty good like it's hard to be like come away from that and be like super cynical and think that That's like good. all the people are like beating their kids or something you know aren't some of them beating their kids though some definitely bit. are yeah. absolutely but which you can do in every state not. of the union you know the majority are not i think where the the problem is is that the majority are still doing a bunch of like coercive shit such as oh like I mean, what's a what's a what's a tougher thing than the couch thing? Because well, it's... that's uh, yeah, it just depends on the age, really. But like, a good example would be like, <laughs> you're going to church on Sunday, right? Like that's like widespread, right? You know, and if the kids like, nah, I don't want to go to church. They're like, yeah, you're still going. Get in the but car. I mean... You're trying. You're 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 saving their soul, though. You're preparing them to be a good, you know, right. religious proper person. So, right, right, right. 
it's like forcing them to eat their vegetables times a thousand. So, I mean, you can talk your you can talk yourself into almost any type of right, but it's like indoctrination. That. It is. It's and it's coercive. Okay. But where is that line? You know, I was homeschooled. I you know didn't learn enough advanced math, perhaps because I was allowed to read you know history books all day most of the time. Did my parents deprive me of an education, you know, in math and higher math? Maybe. I mean, you can always find something that someone's doing wrong yeah, in parenting like, and try to make it better through, well, what? Co I the think state? that, like, the lessons that are exist within, like, the Bible, for, let's just, you know, that's, like, the mainstream here in America, Right. By and large, there's like good lessons in there, right? There's like the Jesus, if you look at like the gospel, you know, he's preaching love and it's mostly like, you know, like the golden rule type stuff. It's like very like. Well, that's the good shit, sure. Yeah, right. That's what Some I'm saying. Some shit, oh. but then there's Lot, you know, and uh, Isaac and Abraham and stuff it, in the right, Old right, Testament right, 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 that's right, got right. nothing but pure. No blood sacrifice i mean the uh, but, but the point i'm making though is is that yeah people it's like you said like people take that stuff literally right and then they end up doing like dumbass shit that like causes trauma to their kids mm -hmm. and so like anarchist parenting and good parenting in general like good i'll say good secular parenting right mm -hmm. is like not doing all those bad things and then doing like normal ass good things like we're gonna like go for a walk together like you're gonna tell me like how you feel about this thing and like i'm going to listen to you like mm -hmm. that's you know sounds pretty good to me yeah but again it's not like um it's banal right yeah. and that's the problem i think with like doing the right thing a lot is that it is super banal it's like yeah yeah, yeah. so like right we're not gonna do that bad thing it's like, what are you going to do? Um, just going to hang out here and just chill and not do any bad stuff, okay? And it's like, that's not, like, cool, I guess, in our culture. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, when I've talked about the idea of, like, child liberation and that philosophical stuff with people, most of whom I'm thinking of do not have children, so there is that. Yeah. Uh, things get a little overly philosophical in a way that sounds nice, but you can't really apply to actual yeah. tiny, dumb humans. You know, it, it's, are you being coercive if you prevent your four-year-old from moving out to live with the local sketchy guy? You know, I mean, or you grab their arm when they're about to run into the street or like there's, you know, there's probably a million examples where technically you're being philosophically bad, but how could you possibly not do those things? Um, right. Okay. So like my take on like family, right? Family is bullshit. Okay. <laughs> like family <laughs> is total, <laughs> like it's nonsense. I don't know why we do things the way that we do, but this is what we're, we're stuck in. Right. Mm -hmm. So my family, at least the whole point of it is just to be like a platform for like the people in the family group or pod, whatever the fuck. And like, it's for us to be able to like, to, to like climb that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, to like get towards self-actualization. Right. And so that's what we, we're, it's a mutually supporting group, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like this thing where there's like a head of household and like, I'm the like patriarch and what I right. say goes or whatever. Like that's, there's no like, it, but at the same time, yeah. Like, sorry, um, Millie, your opinion on <laughs> like what we're going to have for dinner being like cookies is trash. I don't know. I like, think we should not what's I'm going to make we'll myself some, like quinoa or whatever the fuck. I want those cookies, man. Pass that shit over. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a telling point about cookies, but it's because it's not because I'm the dad. It's because right. I've read a fucking book on nutrition. Okay. And she hasn't. So when she reads the book on nutrition that says that cookies are better than fucking salad, okay, then she can bring that shit. But for right now, we're having Or if there's salad, a new study okay? about cookies.
cookies being better than salad that just came out that she can, you know, approach you with and be like, look, cookies are more healthy than salad. Science says so. Right. And, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going through this right now with, with, I have a daughter who's like anti healthy food. Mm. It's like, ah, oh, it's so frustrating, but we're working our way through it. But yeah, I definitely, you know, an anarchist parent, right, would never, I would hope, never be like, yeah, you're eating that. You're not leaving the table until you finish your plate. Like, that's, that's a mid-century kind of parenting. That, that, yeah. Yeah, that's the kind of shit you don't do, right? Mm -hmm. And so what do you do instead? You're like, oh, well, you don't want to have salad. Let's see what else we have in the kitchen that I can help you prepare. Because you're not going to have the salad that we everybody else is eating, you know? And it's like, well, there's uh, cookies. It's like, yeah, no, no, no. That's not, that's not a meal. Mm -hmm. That's a treat. <laughs> you're not having that in place of the salad. So we can do like a sandwich. We have some soup that was left over from the other night. You know what I mean? Like, and you kind of go through that stuff. And then they finally, they like usually realize that like two cookies is not going to be like filling enough. Right. And so they're going to eat something else. That's the, the alternative option. Unfortunate thing is <laughs> once you expose your kids to ramen, you can't go back. Oh no. We know yeah. about it. <laughs> it's too yeah, late, sounds, man. They're all ruined. That sounds reasonable though. I mean, I've heard people say that with like a little, like a kindergarten age kid with like what to wear. You give them some options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so they're, learn options. they're learning about choosing even for themselves. Yeah, themselves. we're big on options. We're big on bodily autonomy, you know. What about when we start getting into adolescence and you can make the argument that... I mean, I think teenagers should have more legal rights than they do, certainly. Um, but Yeah, like, I mean, again, I can't really change... <laughs> society, right? All I can really do is say, all right, um, all the times for it to go out. You want to do this? Okay, cool. Like, this is how we're doing it. You know, like, um, I'm here to support you. Dude, I don't know about the adolescence, but like, I just try to put things to my kids. Like, again, it's more of like a, for me, it's not so much of like an anarchism thing, like being like anti hierarchical or whatever. It's mm -hmm. more thing of like, Hey, like this is how things are. Like my kids started picking up like a lot of like really um, generic, like, Oh, like the cops are bad, like kind of stuff from us. And it's yeah. like, well, you need to know why they're bad, you know? And it's like, well, all they do is like kill black people. It's like, nah, like, it's not all they it's do. So much more than that. Like, we, you know, until, uh, and it's like, th the thing is, is, and this is what I tell them, like, you can't go around just being like, fuck the police right. when you're in like third grade because you're going to draw like, so much negative attention to you and you don't right. know how to handle that yet. You don't have the response to that yet. So just don't say that stuff out in public. Okay. Right. Like, we can talk about it here in the house, you know, but, like, we can't be, like, critiquing things that are near and dear to society out in public Loudly. when well, yeah. you're not ready to, like, have those discussions with those people, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think when it, they become, like, teenagers and stuff, they're going to just go their own ways, I guess, or whatever, and it's just going to be a thing of, like, trying to be supportive and provide stability and guidance for them you know this sounds really awesome but it always comes down to the system depends on you and your wife being you know being good and not being assholes who beat your kids right so which is why every, right every why the family has, unit sucks yeah yes i i see very little way to resolve that because again like a four-year-old doesn't know very much shit uh compared to a 30-year-old and, you know, but any two, uh, you know, like you can make your own family without any input from the rest of society if you feel a hankering to. And obviously we don't trust the state to intervene and be like, no, well, uh -huh. we don't want to make parenting good. 
The state's the fucking one that lets you hit your kids in all 50 states. I'll say this. One of the most, like, frightening experiences was we had, like, the Child Protective Services or whatever show up at our house because somebody who also has my same last name of Pierce, Oh, there was some, like, report made that they were driving around on a golf cart smoking crack. Wow. And they were like, will you guys submit to a drug test? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I don't think you have the right house. Like, this is just all messed up. Like, like, how many kids do you think I have? Six? No. <laughs> Wrong place. Bye. <laughs> like, you got to go go back and check your information. Come back with some, like, court paperwork or something later. <laughs> Sorry. Have a nice day. <laughs> that's both humorous and very disturbing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Especially when you read these like things that like within the homeschool community, like there's people that like they haven't had their paperwork kept up to date, and then like you know nonsense happens, and then they get found out that they don't have their paperwork up to date, and their freaking kids get taken away. You know, or they don't update their paperwork, and but there's the a Turpin family, and they've been. They didn't educate, you know, their thirty-year-old past the first grade. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's that's disturbing stuff. I mean, that's that's the problem, man. I don't trust the state to fix it at all. But homeschooling, just by virtue of the fact that you can keep your kid away from other eyeballs, any person, not you know, a person of authority yeah. in charge, just any person who sees, you know, that they have a bruise. Or, you know, they look like they're starving to death or something. I mean, that's why maybe you need, a you know, rights of children. Like, that, like yeah, you, your, your parents aren't allowed to keep you indoors, like, 24-7 or just... I don't know. Okay, so, like, I, I agree with what you're saying. However, my thing is, like, all kids already have those rights not to be abused. Right? The government just doesn't recognize that. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. You know? It's like like the same thing where it's like, I have the right to kill myself if I want to. The government doesn't recognize that, but I still have that. And I think that that paradigm is important because it's like, wait a second. No, 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 no. In reality, I can do what I want. And you guys have this like oppressive institution set up to disincentivize me from doing that. But I can do whatever I want. And my kids, right, can do whatever they want. And they just have to realize that there's consequences, right? Yeah. But I don't believe in artificial, imposing artificial consequences on stuff. For sure. And so that's that's what, you know, you get into that thing of, okay. So, like, you talk about, like, the Turpin family, right? They were the ones, they were, like, hoarders and all this. It was, like... Child hoarders and regular yeah, ones. Very yeah. messed up, right? Yeah. So, like, is there, like, a specific, like, solution to that, right? And, and again, this it's, like, don't do the bad thing, right? <laughs> like, yes. a, those parents didn't come from, like, great family backgrounds, Okay. And that's where you get into, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier, the fundamental attribution error. They're not bad people, right? They started off as just humans and then they were like brought up in some fucked up environment and that, that trauma, like it's like a virus, it spread. Yeah, definitely. And so the idea, right. If if you ask me is humanity has to like put a cap on that shit. You know, we've got to get to the point where we're deep. We're not constantly traumatizing and yeah. re-traumatizing ourselves, yeah. right? And our kids, and then their kids are going to like re-traumatize their kids, and so on. Yeah. You know, you you gotta break that cycle. And that's some people can. Once and you some break, people it's really only once don't. you break that cycle can you even begin to talk about some of like the more advanced stuff. Like, how are you gonna like get to like respecting the planet when like People can't respect their own children, you know? So I don't There's your pull quote. That's a pull quote for you. That's good. Like, and that's why, that's why, uh, like, before you you came into non-Servium, one of the things that I was always, like, asking about was, like, can we, like, ask people how, like, what, like, what's prioritization, right? Like, Mm -hmm. prioritization, like, how do you do that? 
like in an anarchist sense, like what's the most important priority for like anarchists to concern themselves with? Like people that think like us, right? Like how should we, like, what should we be doing? What's the most important thing? How do we figure that out? What's the system to do that? I mean, my answer is is an unhelpfully human life, but you can take that in about seven different directions immediately as to what that actually means for prioritizing. So, but human life is the only, you know, you can't fix that uh, if you get that wrong. And Yeah. I, I think that, I think right now, if you look at like anarchism as like a monolith, right. And you say, okay, just boom, like, this is like what anarchism is and like it's its presence in the world and society, right? Like it's role right now. If you ask me is to like educate. Mm -hmm. I think that's the primary thing mm -hmm. that, it, to me. I think certain people um, and my cousin was in these circles more than I ever was like social anarchist going to, every G20, that sort of thing. Like people get really distracted by the street fighting element. And, you know, I think because it's like invigorating, I'm sure. Like, um, and I've never been convinced that most of the time that's very useful at all. It certainly has its moments, but it, it feels much bigger and grander, I'm sure than educating, you know, on a, like one-to-one -one basis. So of course people are going to be drawn to that if they're feeling radical, I honestly think that like the, the educational aspect of radical politics is the top priority because mm -hmm. I don't think that there's any other achievable goals other than like proliferating these great ideas. Mm -hmm. Then you know what I mean? Like I think a lot of the ships have already sailed. Which, <laughs> which, which ships are the sounds like my pessimism, but it's not, it's just it like ships. It's like realizing that like, yeah, you're, you're, you're in an empty train station. I don't. Okay. First there were ships and they were sailing and now we're in an empty yeah, train station. Same thing. So, uh, you're on the dock and there's no boat. <laughs> but where's the train? <laughs> right. It's in the water. I completely, well, that explains the problem. Um, I completely lost track of where that metaphor was supposed to be going. So. It derailed into the sea, I guess. Yes. Yeah, definitely. What were we, what, what was the point of that? Oh, um, talking about that, like, like extinction rebellion, right? Mm -hmm. Like extinction rebellion is in some, like, I understand <laughs> why people got involved with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I've read a little bit about this. I think it's fascinating. And, but ultimately, you know, when it gets to the point where you're doing things that are counterproductive to what it is you're trying to do, right. Then you got to just pull the plug and go, Hey guys, like it's I over. Mean, their their right? entire like, thing like, is we, getting attention, right. Which, what is that? And there, then, then what? Yes. You can get attention if you throw soup on a Van Gogh painting um, and you got attention and then what? I think most people hate your you yeah. know, what you did. Now, a lot of people hate completely innocuous things like, you know, kneeling for the national anthem and stuff, and you shouldn't let that stop you. But, I mean, I would have been pissed if that Van Gogh painting didn't have glass on it. You know, it did, so everything's fine. But, but, but the why idea that it's self-evidently important to get attention for your act, and therefore then you've accomplished something, well, have you? I don't know. I mean, not necessarily. I PETA is kind of a tragedy in that why way. Why would you be upset about a Van Gogh painting getting like annihilated? Because I like Van Gogh. But we already have like all of those works like digitally captured and everything. Like, who cares about you? You're never even gonna like get to look at the original, right? I might. Like, who knows? I like the object. I like the thing itself. To me, that's. A f that's more of a tie to my love of history than my any liking of art. To me to know that the actual object was done by the actual man at the actual time. You know, I like to stand in a completely boring spot if I know something interesting happened there a uh, hundred years ago. So 
I mean, you, you, you make a good point that's beyond, I don't know, just iconoclasm, or, which I assumed you were going for. Yeah. I, again, like, the, this <laughs> gluing yourself to a wall is, like, yeah. only... I can only get behind that if it's actually going to, like, educate people. But I just don't... Well, that's what they that think they're doing. doing, don't they? Don't they think that's what they're doing? Because... More, I mean, again, okay, so more people will hear about Extinction Rebellion because they glued themselves to the wall or whatever, and they'll look it up and they'll be inspired to X, and then more people will know about Y. I mean, I, I guess that's what they think they're doing, and I really, I don't know. Uh, right now, but see, that's the thing is, is that's where you get into like prioritization, right? Mm -hmm. It's a misprioritization, is what it is. If nobody knew about climate change, then yeah, like, I guess something like yeah. that might matter, but like these are people. We're, we're talking about an era where you have like mis and disinformation campaigns, right? right? That are in support of like existing power structures that right. shouldn't. And, and it's like combating those is like it outweigh like that fight outweighs to me like the fight of like drawing more attention to the fact that climate change exists like i don't i think it's a foregone conclusion that cl climate change exists it's not even controversial in right-wing circles to say climate change exists it's a little bit controversial in those circles but not as much as it once was um they have yeah. a lot of caveats and asterisks i think it's like what the potential outcomes of climate change may or may not be and like sure. what to do about that if anything, is is a uh, serious uh, point of contention, maybe, it, it, amongst, like, the right wing, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm a degrowther. Sorry. Yeah. No reason I probably don't fit in. Just the end result of that is, like, I, who have not, who have visited five countries in my life, will never get to go anywhere ever again because, you know, we can't have jet planes. And then... It's very, it's very discouraging as a long, as a goal, as anything. I mean, I don't know. But you can go there. You just can't go on a fucking jet, right? How, how will I get there then? Take Propeller a boat. Pipe? Sail there. Oh, okay. I'm not sailing there. Why not? Because <laughs> that we... sounds horrific. Could be fun. Uh, no. Guess I'm staying here. Well, see, but that's what I'm saying, though, is, like, you know, I mean, yeah, like, until we have, like, truly, like, limitless renewable energy resources, like, you know, all these, like, super high-tech, you know, solar-powered jetpacks or whatever, like, you know, burning the candle at both ends so that we can, like, travel for leisure doesn't really seem to be, like... But then again, I mean, I, I I hear what you're saying. Like, you know, if if you got like uh, <laughs> the scope of like the like military industrial complexes use of fossil fuels, and then like the global shipping industry, and then you're like, well, I'm just taking a flight to like go see Japan. Like, right. you know, yeah. like I get it. But yeah. I would think if the technology didn't exist to be able to like travel at like these really high speeds and stuff to get to different places that people would be able to travel like in other ways than by burning fossil fuels to get there. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to hop in my Conestoga wagon, visit my cousin in six months. And also like, you know, like, I mean, I'm kind of like VR technology could be kind of cool. Oh Jesus. That's not at all the same thing. You don't, I don't know. You don't want to go visit the, um, the, <laughs> the Seoul, South Korea metaverse. No, I want to go to. I want to go to Seoul in real life. I want to use VR to go visit. You know, uh, the olden times that I can't currently get to, no matter how big my jet is. Yeah, that's. I mean, right. See, now you keep. You, that's the second technological solution you've turned to, and now I'm just thinking that's what a lot of people think. Oh, it's just. Man. That's how Silicon Valley, you know, will save us. It's, it's you got to be able to, it's, you got to be able to do like high tech and low tech, right? I mean, I agree. I do agree with that. And as a very broad um, sort of statement, that is true. I just, uh, again, as someone who was in, in 
in libert from libertarian circles, like there's, it's all about waiting for the techno genius to invent the thing that fix everything. And then you get people, you know, who turn out to be just Peter Thiel, who's like, I love neo reactionaryism and bathing in the blood of the youth. And you're like, great. <laughs> Thanks. Right. <sighs> or, you know, I, I didn't have that much faith in Elon Musk before, but I, I was like, okay, well going to, sp he wants to ostensibly go to space and make the world less shitty. Both sound great. And then he was like, just kidding. I'm going to buy my own shit posting mechanism forever. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The rich truly are just like us, I guess. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, that's another thing that, like, I, I don't think that that argument, that the argument for, like, like, a lot of people feel like the arguments for, like, degrowth and, like, eco-socialism and such are, like, tantamount to disaster, right, for, mm -hmm. like, the capitalist class. And I'm like, yeah, but, like, also, like, think about this. Like, what if you didn't have to deal with all that fucking stress, man? Like, you would just be able to, like, chill the fuck out. Okay, now we're that? turning to primitivism? Is that what we're trying no, to do no, no, next? No, 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 I just mean, like... Agrarianism? Like... Cottage core? What are we doing? So, listen. <laughs> the problem with, like, the, like, primitivist shit... It, it, I mean, it abounds, but, like, one of, like, the big things is that, like, dude, like, you're not gonna unbuild all the shit that's already been built. Right. Like, come on, what the fuck? Like, I get, like, rewilding and stuff, but, like, no. Like, the That's roads are good. Like, yeah. roads are good, that's fine. Like, mm -hmm. we can, like, keep our roads and our buildings and our electricity and shit. Like, come on, man. But, I do I'm think medicine that, like, and glasses. the scaling the scaling back of like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but like just being like Amazon now, like fuck that shit. That shit is fucking ridiculous. The supply chain to get you like a fucking like dildo in like under an hour in any major <laughs> metropolitan area. Like fucking come on. I mean, that's the future libertarians want i suppose um no that's that's the current existing reality no i know but <laughs> that's what i'm saying that future, I mean, without, that future without any drawbacks whatsoever i think that's the th that's what that's what we want is the thing we have without any of the th problems it causes <laughs> right yeah, yeah you want to have your cake and eat it too right mm -hmm. you want to Hold it's like how can forever. I how can I get my cup of bone broth, but it's not cow bone broth; it's human bone broth in your imagined political utopia, right? That's okay. what I'm joking about before the call. And I never understood why we were going to drink that bone broth of humans. I assume now that it has something to do with Peter Singer. Which I imagine that was <laughs> no, it's just the most hor horrendous thing that like came to my mind when I was thinking about how like you know part of the problem with cappuccino is that there's like all these ethical quandaries surrounding it. And then also like, I mean, who, like, who are you that you deserve to have a drink that's made from the products, which cappuccino is made of? Like, are you royalty? Yes. <laughs> that's what we wanted with the sur with surplus goods and a certain amount of a society, you know, all, with all the stuff that we like, even yeah. in a, a political way we like, because we like to be comfortable and, and warm and things like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, we do have certain things that would have been for royalty back in the day, you know? Right. Uh, and that's, yeah. and most of us enjoy that. I would say, even if we wish we didn't. So, Right. I mean, people like nice things. I get that. But like some of those nice things aren't even necessarily nice. They're just like artifacts of like a colonial imperialistic shitstorm. I mean, what about in the alternate universe when everyone peacefully traded to get that coffee and there was never any totally. colonialism? But that's what I'm saying. Like, I yeah. mean, I don't think that like Starbucks cappuccino 
would have come to existence if it weren't for the history of like capitalism. I mean, and then your, de your desire has been fed to you f for that. I mean, with coffee is a particularly apt example because none of us need coffee. It's true. And it is a, you know, the most societally acceptable drug addiction that we have. So yeah, when you're talking coffee, it's a little more convincing. But you know? it's also like, where does coffee come from? It comes yeah. from these like the best coffee ever had was in Guatemala. So right, it conquered lands. Not currently conquered plantations, right? Yeah. Coffee plantations. Yeah, you know. So like, I, I just feel like it's like the anarchist critique of restaurants, right? It's like oh god, I hate that so much. What's up? I hate that so much. It's... I know, but it's good, isn't it? Well, in, in that it's <laughs> annoying and makes you think in an irritated fashion for a minute, but priorities though, right? We're talking about, and like, that's the one you're going to pick tearing down restaurants. Like, I mean, no, it's a yeah. good, it's a good critique, not because restaurants are so important, but because everybody can relate to that. It's like Graber's bullshit jobs is actually like a good book because <laughs> nearly everybody has worked one of those bullshit jobs. I don't know much about that book, though. I just saw something about it just today somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically just... Oh, man. It's... Yeah. It's sad, dude. <laughs> like, it's, it's sad because, like, you can go read, like, these, like, really fascinating critiques of, like, capitalism and, like, all the things that, like, people talk about in that stuff, like happens in real life and you're just like oh my god like it's an onslaught you know it's just like the the bullshit jobs like the uber driving like fucking come on I'm man like what are I, we doing i think that anybody who was super hard on uber has to um I will not accept it from any New Yorkers, uh, Chicago and San Franciscans. LA people don't really have good public transportation and stuff, but um, I, New Yorkers critiquing Uber can fuck off because okay. they had a taxi every four feet and uh, Pittsburgh sure didn't. So. Listen, Uber, if ride sharing was really just like sharing, <laughs> then that would be fine. Yeah. Okay, but it's but not. I mean, we had that in Pittsburgh. It was called Jitneys. Black people used them all the time because what little cabs there were didn't pick them up. And obviously the government didn't care for that because they preferred to have, you know, taxi monopolies and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, there's always something like that. Yeah. Right. So again, like, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, these like mutually like self reinforcing power structures, like how do you tear them down? And it's like, well, we can't even really begin to start until everybody's like, kind of like, at least like the mass majority is on the same sheet of music that like shit's fucked up and needs to change. Uh, I think. I, don't I know. mean, every, probably everybody thinks something is fucked up and needs to be changed in some way, but that page would have to be pretty big if we're all going to get on it in a lot of ways. I mean, because again, it's, I think it's I could sit here defending Uber more than any listener would probably enjoy. Though. Yeah, you, you, Lyft Uber is sucks, there. man. I mean, some people want a part time job with flexible hours. Like, all that shit, all that gig economy shit sucks ass. It needs to go away. But it's probably not going to go away because there's too much power in. Silicon Valley and venture capital. I just of all the of all the companies to go after. I mean, they expanded too fast, and like they didn't, you know, they weren't real in terms of. Uh, I just of all the things to go after, the one that deals with what we already have, which is fucking cars, a desire that's already there, which is to get from point A to point B. I mean, I just think that was a good idea because um, it's just a, a cab that actually is more efficient. Just. As long as you're not from New York City, because anybody who had cabs can fuck off when they try to, See, <laughs> they try to talk about is, Uber. This is also why you get into, like, I'm, like, pretty, like, lefty 
on this kind of stuff where you get into like, okay, so like, what if like we could get the government to, <laughs> to like provide free transportation for everybody? Oh my everywhere, God. Right. And it's like, you know, that, that would work. I, that would actually fuck nothing. up and corrupt the capitalist like monopolies. That is the worst thing you've said, including the human bone broth part. And I'm only slightly kidding because it doesn't but, work like that and it never will. Right. But like if we had, um, okay, like the technology to do a lot of this stuff already exists and it's like infuriating sure. when you realize like, okay, like we, we could have like self-driving solar powered free vehicles to take us wherever we need to go. <laughs> but we're not using that technology to do that so that everybody has the mass maximum amount of mobility that they need. We're just like eating it. Do we each actually other alive. have the technology? I mean, do we actually have the technology? Because isn't uh, Tesla running over people periodically because their self driving cars still need work? Right, 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 right. I'm just saying, like, the technology actually exists. Like, there's ways that these things could be done safely. I mean, I it's very like possible. It's not like, okay. Like when I first started like looking into this, like it was, I think 2013, I think when I started telling everybody that self-driving cars were like going to be a thing and like electric vehicles, and then they burned you as a witch. Is that what happened? Oh yeah. People used to be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> and now I'm an electrician and people call me and ask me to install electric vehicle charging stations in their garage. And I tell Fair people who are building new houses, Hey man, you know, you should probably put a circuit in for this electric vehicle charging station that you don't think you're going to need, but you're going to need later. And they're mm -hmm. like, nah, I'm going to drive a fucking vehicle that is powered by fuel for the rest of my life. And I'm like, really? So in 15 years when you're still alive and the vehicle that drives off of like electricity is cheaper than the vehicle that drives off of like gas. You're going to pay more to drive off of gas. And they're like, no, 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 I wouldn't do that. And I'm like, right. You wouldn't. <laughs> like, so get, so get that circuit. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 and I'm like, you can wait, you don't have to do it now. It's yeah. a deal. And it's like, I get it. If it's a sunk cost for you, it's a sunk, like, don't do it. Right. But like the point is people will do <laughs> what they're led to do. Is that the point? Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Cause we went on a quite a journey. And if that was the point, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, it's like, right. So like, I personally think that the reason it's not so much that we can't have more mobility because of like technology, it's because of like capitalist property stuff that we can't have the technology being used to do the thing that we want, which is to have mobility at like the lowest cost possible. If the one thing the government can't provide, it's the lowest cost possible. Well, I do and, believe that. And, see, and that's the problem, is, like, the economy is so fucked up that, like, the government sometimes is better at doing that. And that's when you kind of, like, sound like an idiot, because you're like, well, I, like, fucking hate the government, but it's so bad that if they step in now, it would actually get better. I don't buy it one second with transportation or with like food. Um, those in particular, I think that would be a fucking disaster to make the government in charge of those people would die. Yeah. I'm not saying that the government should be in charge of those things. All right. I'm just saying that if like the government actually said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to like start buying all of the like, electric vehicles or whatever and like we're going to provide like electric vehicles to all the citizens of the united states and they're all right. going to be like solar charged powered whatever electric vehicles you guys we're going to like put them out there right that would interrupt the existing automotive industry drastically where right? did those vehicles come from i mean who made them 
the automotive industry would make them. Okay, would they take bigs, uh, bids? Would would how would the right? I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, be like, as corrupt as usual. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, you know, the question is, if that was what it took to get us off of fossil fuels, would but it be like a, a reasonable concession? You know, and like yes, talking about I, this kind of stuff, does that make me not an anarchist? Am I picked out? Talk about anything you want i think <laughs> talking is talking um i know lots of anarchists who probably might agree with that and i never will but you can doubt yes you can talk about it here on non-servian we love to talk about uh i just come from the land of taxi subsidies and not being able to get a taxi so i'm very annoyed by uh things like that i guess yeah it's like, like, I think there's like those places where they've put in like bicycles, you know, like That's the like rental bike everywhere, isn't it? Now, I mean, every no. city wise, I mean, everywhere. Oh yeah, but like people use them. People were like, nah, they're never gonna fucking use a bike, and then they like put the bikes in, and then people use them. So people, like, people do like bikes. I'm. Well, I'm just saying that I think moderately that, disabled, so I, I think I don't that, know if I remember how to ride a bike, but that's but people like bikes. I think that the American like myth of um, supply and demand, and demand being like the cause for the supply, <laughs> is like if you get out of that paradigm, then you can start thinking about like alternatives, right? I, mean, I definitely think supply and demand is real, but it's certain you can certainly overly simplify it or like I always think of like a pet rock. There was no demand for the pet rock before it was invented in like 1970 or whatever, you know, any novelty item like that, that hadn't been done before the demand oh. was created by the supply. And Listen, the fact if the, and that's the other, like on the economics thing, like I got to get you on the freaking um, capitalist power train. Well, where's where are we going on that train? Where's yeah, the, the train capital is power stuff. I mean, you will be like, oh fuck, supply and demand. It's bullshit. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's rough. It's a rough ride. <laughs> I don't know if we're going there. I don't know if I'm on board. See, I'm, I'm truth, ruining man. my anarchist cred. I'm ruining my cred among social anarchists. Um, but if they've ever seen my Twitter, they know I didn't have me in the first place. So I'm not going to worry about it. Nah, man. It's, it's, oh, God. Those guys, the capitalist power guys, um, I don't even, I don't Bickler know. and uh, I don't Nitsan. Know. You, have, you have to explain what you're talking about. You have to. Okay, so there's a couple economists, Bickler and Nitsan, they wrote this behemoth of a book called capital as power and it's like oh it basically like rips neoclassical and marxist economics to shreds and then okay. offers like they listen like my critique of that book is is that they don't offer enough of a solution of an explanation as to like what is like really going on you know, mm -hmm. but they do have some like really good um, assertions or whatever in there. And again, like once you get through that book, it's like you can't unlearn it. Like it's just too like it's they took I think the data set that they used was like some like it's like census data having to do with like GDP in the United States going back to like the depression or, or earlier, you know, and the charts that they generated out of this that show like the issues with supply and demand and with the idea that like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's too much in that. That's a, it's like an entire like field of study. <laughs> field of study that, Marx and all uh, classical liberalism are both wrong. So yeah, what's, like, what's right then? What's right? Well, th that's the, the they're yeah. The undergirding of it is that basically, like, 
Marxism is like saying like labor is the underpinning of the economy, yeah, yeah. right? And then like neoclassical economics is saying like utility or something like that is like the underpinning of the economy. And they're like, no, it's power. I mean, yes. I, I mean, it, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true to a point. I just, uh, yeah, but it's not, I mean, that's like, like a gross, gross reduction of like a 400 yeah. plus page book, right? Like, <laughs> Well, power is definitely doing heavy lifting in the economy. I'll give them that, to be sure. Like, you, it, it changes the way you look at things. Like, you're like, hey, like, Amazon, how the fuck did they lose money for so long, right? Doing this, like, market insertion backed by vent venture capital, right? right? Like, th like it, why? How? Like, what the fuck is going on there? Like, didn't people want to make money on this shit? Like, what the fuck? And it's like, dude, it doesn't have to do with, like, profits or short-term anything it was it was it had to do with power i mean somebody had to have money at some point like the venture capitalists who already got money in some fashion but the whole yeah we're, we're not actually in the black thing with businesses i confess has always confused me with that yeah and i know that well, uber does that too it's right but that's the thing is is that it's not about that that individual business right is part of a larger vehicle right yeah and that's the problem is you know when you again when you start looking at it like taking a step back like they they get in it's it's data driven stuff okay which is like, why I'm, i would not be able to retain yeah, it's very it, probably. i like took mo like a few months off of like every other like form of like entertainment and stuff to like read through this not until i, wanted, I get my adhd medication yeah uh, i think i'm good no, but it, it th I'll send you a link to um, the YouTube video. We can link that in the description or whatever of our thing to the very good. Uh, he has like a PowerPoint up. Is on this a new book? Like relatively new or, or is it old? When did they do that book? I think it was like 2012 or something. Okay, that's new for books, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, it's within the last 30 years or whatever. Like, they've been working, they're developing this, you know. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, they're, it's just like, it's like the same thing. It's like, capital is power, how not to die, you know, like Stephen Covey's, like, seven habits, right? Like, I get that, like, these, like, you know, Peter Singer's Practical Ethics, you know, Rawls, Theory of Justice, all this stuff. Like, these things seem disjointed, but to me, those are, like, touchstones, right, of, like, reality. And, yeah. I mean... I think that all the... the if we could get the world to, <laughs> to get on that page, where we're, like, looking at the same common reality... I mean, everyone thinks this, but to me, that's such a, it's, it's, it's like a tautology where you're like, the thing that I think is true is true, or I don't know if it's a tautology, I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, we all think that, I would say, more or less, but you, you need more than that, obviously, um, and room for some subjectivity, because we're not objectivists, for God's sake, hopefully. But that being said, I mean, it's like, it's like people still talk about like, online and, like, I'm sure, like, right now in a Facebook group somewhere, somebody is talking about the tragedy of the commons. Yeah. And they don't know who Eleanor Ostrom is. It's like, we gotta fix that. Okay, I don't, I've, I've fully reached my limit in learning about someone that I don't know who they are. Oh, so. Eleanor Ostrom? Yes. Well, like, Eleanor Ostrom did, like, all this work on, like, commons, Right. And like, she studied, like she got a fucking Nobel prize and like, that's, you know, that's a big deal. And I probably wouldn't have even known about her if it weren't for like guys like Kevin Carson, you know, Kevin Carson shout out. That's good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, you can't, this, you can't do a podcast on non-Serbium and not shout out Kevin Carson shit. There's plenty of things I don't agree with Kevin Carson about, but I do. You have to also appreciate him. I'm sure there's some stuff that I probably would disagree with him about, but I mean, and those things are on the economic side for me. So what, like the defense of the labor theory of value or something? Oh, does he do that? Does he do hey, that? Hey man, I listen, 
I'll defend labor theory of value on the like <laughs> on the like grounds that it is an excellent teaching tool. <laughs> but for 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 what? For a fallacy? Well, for explaining labor relations to people. Okay, perhaps. It's not real though. It's part of the equation. Is it though? Yes. Or it It I is. Mean, <laughs> Where is it ever applicable, though, in actuality? Right, that's the problem with it. <laughs> it's not real, exactly. No, it is real, but it's not like you can... <sighs> it's complicated, man. It's nuanced, right? Like, the labor theory of value doesn't, like, help us to, like, define, like, what, like, capitalism is or whatever in any, like, real measurable sense. But... When you look at like a very like simplified version of like the labor theory of value and you say, hey man, your boss is fucking stealing from you. It's like, aha, that's what it's good for. That doesn't seem to have anything to do with the labor theory of value to me. I mean, I could see it applied to situations where you're like, oh, teachers should make more. Because, I mean, statements like that have a whisper of the labor theory of value because you're saying your labor should be more value. But, I mean... The simple version of it isn't anything. It's the idea that like a capitalist boss is necessarily taking excess value that was generated by labor, right? That's like the Marxist like thing, right? I hate Marxism. I think Marxism is so fucking dumb. Mainly I, more I love it. <laughs> Because you know, you know why I hate Marxism more than anything is because people who talk about it are like people who talk about astrology. They they they, they drop it like it's self evidently scientifically proven fact, and we all know that it's completely like insular and also wrong. But, Wait, but so you really don't like Professor Wolf? I don't know who that is. Oh man, yeah, I got I gotta get you like you gotta get bread tubed, man. Uh, I feel like I watch things that, te I mean, does, doesn't ContraPoints count as that? Uh, I, I don't know. I've never really been that big a fan of ContraPoints. Some of the stuff is... Too entertaining? Awful. Not enough charts for you? Yeah, sorry. Not enough equations on chalkboards for you? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm that that's guy. Not, that's another problem with communists, Marxists, is that, n that I've never found one that was a good writer in my entire life. Okay, that's, well... Mm, I mean, they mostly can't write for shit. Especially, the more important the thing that they're writing about is, the less comprehensible it is. I don't know. I'm I, Like, m Marxists... Marxists are cool. I mean, <laughs> sorry. Like, cool. I'm cool with Marxism. It's it's cool. Marxism is not cool. There are cool Marxists. Look, that is, that if, if Jordan standard. Peterson fucking hates it, I love it. <laughs> uh, How about that? Is that a ju justified I mean, position on Marxism? <laughs> he does hate a lot of things that are not bad. It's true. You got me there. He says he hates tyranny, but... No, he doesn't. He's right. a set. He's, a conser he's the ultimate conservative. He's terrified and pessimistic and thinks that Dude. the second he calls you by your preferred pronouns, the Maoists will take over, so civilization will crumble. That's what happens. So you can't yield one inch, darn it. Why... Yeah, I, I misgendering I like... Elliot Page makes him a hero in my book. That was sarcasm. Yes, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think that I think that Marxists um, are maligned a lot. They're like treated like, oh, like the labor theory values shit, so like your shit. Because your guy that your, like, group is, like, following is, like, come up with this dumb idea, right? And it's like, mm, it's not, it's, there's a lot of jumps in there, guys. Like, the... The first people... step is don't name your belief after one guy, is, I'd say. But that's what I'm saying is, is, like, like, Marxism is not, 
I don't even know what, what like, how you would, def it's not like a, d a define, it's like people that, like, read Marx and were like, okay, I get that, right? And then they, like, went on to do other stuff. Those are Marxists. Well, like, so they're not necessarily all, like, these huge, like, fanboys of, like, Karl Marx. Yeah, that's not a Marxist. That's somebody who read Marx and maybe got something out of it, which is not a Marxist, necessarily. Deirdre McCloskey said something about um, yeah. Marx being the most important social scientist of the 19th century, and he got everything wrong or something like that. I'm not quite sure how to unpack that, but, I mean, I think it suggests that people no, can get... No, that's the thing, though, is, like... I mean, I don't know. Like he he had limited information. Who knows I mean, what he would so be like? So say we all, so right? We are, yeah, obviously. That's but not, like his his. I mean, literally everyone on the planet had limited information to a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just <laughs> saying, like, look, I'm not like an expert in Karl Marx or Marxism or Marxism. No, I'm not but I, I just know that like the entirety of like the like tradition, right, of like Marxism is not all bad, okay? Well, it's not like say, tainted or some shit. Like just don't name just don't make a thing about one guy. And if you're gonna make a thing about one guy, don't add the guys who came afterwards who were way worse. Looking at you, Marxist Leninist, Marxist Leninist Maoists. Those people suck. It's hard to defend Those two actually murder, instituted right? tyranny. That's a weird thing about uh, here here's my defense of Marx. Right wingers always do this, including people like Jordan Peterson. They talk about Marx like he was a tyrant, like he personally did anything except write shit down. Right. You yeah. know, as if he's in the same school as like Stalin, because Stalin was like, "Oh, he's our he's our guy. He influ You know, it's a completely different thing. So that's very strange. I think the big thing is that like with like labor theory of value and like Marx and like him getting things wrong and stuff. It's like, all right, labor, I'm sorry, but like labor is still a part of subjective value, right? Like when somebody says like, well, I, I don't like care about that thing, right? Like I'm not paying for it or whatever, or I, I want that thing. I am paying for it. Like the fact that it exists, right? And that like somebody had to like make it like... They got paid for making it, like, that's feeding into the value right there, alone. No? The fact that they got paid to make it is part of the value. Like, labor, okay, like, when you buy a cup of coffee, when you buy your cappuccino at Starbucks or wherever, mm -hmm. at your local, like, crust punk co-op coffee shop or whatever, <laughs> you know, the money that you're handing over like represents like something that you did to get that money. Right. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. So like there's that whole exchange right, going yeah. on. Right. And like labor is a piece of that. Right. Like people literally are like, dude, I'm not working for $7 an hour. Right. right. Like, yeah. I'm, you know, so it like, people's time and like you could like change that all up and say okay let's well, like utility and disutility or or whatever but like the let's you know call a spade time, a spade. time preference and like, things like yeah, that right exactly it's labor okay like you, you, you fucking like when i go do like work for somebody as an electrician right i'm like yeah i'm gonna like request that you pay me right based off the fact that i did this thing sure <laughs> you know right See, and, like, that, if every contractor does that, then the house is worth X amount. Now, there's also, right? That's not why it's worth anything, though. What's up? The house is worth whatever because because it is. I mean, you could have one guy working really hard yeah. or 50, t you know, taking their time and being kind of half-assed. And if it's, you could potentially get the same house out of it. Yeah, 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 right. I mean, it doesn't. It, it, and that's the thing, right? That's where, like, you get into, like, the subjectivity part of it. And, like... Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the actual... It's not like, a, like, there's, like, a unit that undergirds, like, that system that right, yeah. you can actually rely on, right? I mean, mo we don't but, know what how much labor went into something sometimes. At least not, like, in like, a one-on-one on situation. Like, on an abstract level, right? <laughs> like, labor definitely makes stuff. 
Right. Right. That's true. Or like, I, I don't know. For me, like, I, I don't think that, like, I think if you're talking about, like, how much is something actually worth, right? Mm. Like, how much is this, like, barge that, like, ships things across oceans, like, worth, right? Like, the way that people arrive at that subjective valuation is based in, like, material reality. Oh no, and you said labor, material. Like definitely fed into that. Like real reality of like stuff and things that like we can reach out and touch and it's tangible and Yes, Marxists, I know what material reality is. <laughs> they can't stop saying material. They say it every four minutes. Well, um, I mean, but like what what else are you supposed to say to like describe like something that is a, a thing? Thing? A reality? Thing? The thingy stuff, the world, Con- context clues that you were talking about things, belongings, you know, whatever, and not abstract reasoning. <sighs> right. I also, we also have, we're stopping saying lived experience too. No one's saying that. No, stop saying that. Lived no experience that. isn't all experience yeah. lived. Thank you. Yes. It's just it's it's, it's redundant. Um, but actually, I sort of see what you're saying in terms of. The reality of people laboring as a part of the entire setup and things being yeah. creative or things being served is, is yes. I mean, yes, that that is part of the process. Right. It's like true. a car cannot cost like a brand new car. You cannot make that motherfucker for 10 bucks. OK, sorry. Right. <laughs> like, it's not possible. Why isn't that possible? The right. value. Part, part of that is materials. I am not. I don't know cars, but sure. Right, but it's yeah. the valuation of those materials, right, that causes the price to exist. Right, but which is based on, uh, I don't know. And the materials mind. are <laughs> manufactured by people and machines. And that's more and more robots. The robots are made yeah. from steel so, and titanium and lithium. Yeah. Which is a limited supply in the earth. Then we got, like, fucking NFTs, man. There's no labor in that shit, okay? <laughs> NFTs are... I, I don't like... That's ridiculous because all it does is prop up copyright law. It just, like, reinforces copyright law. That's my first and biggest objection to that nonsense. I don't feel that bad for people who fall for certain frauds like that, I, I confess. I feel a little more bad for them than I do for the people who played Steve Bannon to build the wall. Those people. <laughs> hey, I don't man. feel bad for those people. Steve Bannon should get a medal for that, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Well, then what the hell are you doing here? I don't know. It's um, late. It might be time. The good news is that you get to edit this now. So. Sweet. I'm going to edit it down to just, like, a couple little, like, segments. Just a few well, NSM clips. Okay, Zach, we're wrapping this stuff up. We had a very long, good talk, kind of all over the place, but I'm going to be mulling this over. Um, where can the people find you on the internet, Zach? If you want them to find you, that is. Yeah, I'm not like... <laughs> I, I haven't taken down my Twitter yet, but I'm eventually going to get there to where I actually do that task. But, um, yeah, I think I'm on Mastodon. Uh, just get a hold of, um, they should just get a hold of you, actually, Lucy. If they <laughs> oh, because I know where you are at all yeah, times. Yeah, you can be my keeper. I'm tracking you. Yeah. Um, Nobody's yeah. going to want to talk to me after this. <laughs> wow, okay. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, well, anyone else can follow Non-Servium at Non-Servium Media Collective. I'm pretty sure that's our Twitter address. Good lord. Yeah, um, if they want to get a hold of me, they can just, like, be like, Zach, you suck. Mark sucks. da 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 da, da in the YouTube comments. And then you'll appear out and of I, the mist. Yeah, I'll pop up, and I'll oh defend my myself. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, follow non-servium, uh, non-servium media, all one word on Twitter, um, 
and on Lucy Stag on Twitter, L-U-C-Y-S-T-A-G. And both Non-Serbium and I are also on Mastodon now, and I'm actually using it a little bit, which is fun. So bring down the tyranny of centralized social media. You're listening to the Non-Serbium Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, why not subscribe over on our YouTube channel or on your favorite podcast platform. You can also follow us across social media on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Mastodon. If you're extra interested in seeing this project continue, consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com. But if you can't contribute financially, we still like you a whole lot. And you can help us out just by liking and sharing this episode or any other one that catches your fancy. As always, shout out to our existing patrons. Your support helps us reach a larger audience and helps keep this project alive. Thanks so much.